So this video is going to show you how to produce some simple descriptive statistics in R. I'm going to show you how you can label variables as being categorical. And I'll show you how to produce descriptive statistics using base R as well as using a package that's called table one, which produces you a nice clear descriptive statistic table. And with a few edits to the command, we can use it to show descriptive statistics for two different groups as well as some more complicated statistics than the standard descriptors, like we can get schooner statistics and so on. So it's really useful. So to do the tutorial today, you'll need the read Excel package because we're using an Excel spreadsheet. And um, this package here, um, Modest, is because Base R doesn't produce a mode, but we can use this um, mode estimate package so we can get a mode and this table one package. Once you've installed these, you don't have to reinstall them every single time. However, in each session you wish to use it, you do need to pull them out of the library. So we'll just run those so they are ready to be used. Here's the data that we're going to be using, and all this data and code is linked below the video. So the spreadsheet is called Descriptives Data, and it's an Excel spreadsheet, so we need our read Excel command. So we're going to read it into a data frame that I've just called Desk Stats. You can call it anything you like, though. So we can run that, and I've just had view here, just so we can see the data set. So it's just a data set I've made up with age, sex of participants, drug count, number of drugs they've consumed across their life, different types of drugs, sensation seeking, just a score on a sensation seeking scale, anxiety is a score on an anxiety scale, and drinker class is a categorical variable of the type of drinker they are. And I'll move on to this in one moment. Right now, we can actually get R to give us some basic summary data. If we just type summary in the name of our data frame in here, and there you go, it's given us some basic information about each of our variables. Age, sex, drug counts, sensation seeking, anxiety, drinker class with min, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and max. So it's not the most useful thing in the world here, but you, you can get a rough idea of your data. Now, of course, for the two categorical variables we've got, which we are having as sex and drinker class, obviously the mean doesn't isn't that useful. There's no group that's called one, a 1.25 group. So we, what we need to do is tell R that these variables are categorical. To do that, we use our little extract command here, and we just say from the data frame, desk stats, extract sex and then we just say have a little arrow and just say this is a factor and the factor from descriptive stats called sex has two levels zero and one that we've coded as male and female so zeros are male one is female and then if we do the same for drinker class exactly the same so we extract drinker class Arrow saying it's a factor. Drinker class is made up of these four levels, and those levels are non drinker, light, moderate, and heavy. So we can run those two commands. And now, if we ask for a summary of desk stats, you can see it just tells us the number of people in each of our categories. We've got 33 males in a sample, 7 females. 11 non-drinkers, 14 light drinkers, 9 moderate drinkers, and 6 heavy drinkers. So now R understands that these are categorical variables. Of course, that, that set of descriptive statistics isn't particularly useful. So what we can do is we can ask for a range of different descriptors using base stats. The command here that says attach um, is quite a useful command when you're just working off a single data frame in as much as if I attach the data and I'll just be able to type age and it'll automatically recognize that because it's attached that data frame. If I didn't use the attach command I'd have to say I want age to be extracted from the desk stats data frame. So both of those so that will work right now but if I click attach I can now just ask for my descriptive statistics and you can see these are all base R apart from one of them. So if I just type mean age that's my mean age of my sample median 
So this is the only one that's any different really. It is MFW, which stands for most frequent value. So most frequent value for age, that's our mode. And that required the modest command. Click run. There we go. So we've got um, three modal values, 20, 21, and 22. So we've got these measures of central tendency. We can get spread. We can get the standard deviation, SD age. We can get the variance, type var age. Range. So the range gives a lower and an upper rather than a single value. But I'm sure we can all work that ourselves. Obviously the max, 46, min is 20. And IQR gives us interquartile range. So we can get the descriptive statistics quite simply in that way through base R, just request them. If we didn't use the attach command, as I say, we'd just ask for them in this way. So exactly the same command, except we just need to say what data frame we're gonna be extracting them from. So it's a really simple, straightforward thing to get descriptives in that manner. However, Using this method of writing each one individually is a bit time consuming. So let's look at our table one package. So the table one package takes a lot of this effort out of it. So what we can do is use this command create table one. And on the most simple level, we can just use the command and then say the data equals desk stats. So we just click on that and click run. So this gives us a mean and SD for all the variables, barring the ones we have previously set. So when we label variables as categories, it gives us a percentage. It tells us, in this case, the number of females in the sample, so seven out of the 40, and tells us what this is as a percentage. Likewise, for the drinker class, because there's more than two categories, it gives you the number in each category. So we've got 11 non-drinkers, 14 light drinkers, nine moderate drinkers, and six heavy drinkers. And it works out the percentage for us as well. All the other ones, it just gives us a mean and SD, which is probably what you're more than likely going to be reporting. So really simple command. So you just got to remember though, it's not always going to recognize this as being a categorical variable, or this is a categorical variable unless you use your label categorical variables and then it will understand it's a category automatically and then produce your appropriate descriptive statistics for it so it's a really simple package if you want more details we could use this exact same command as above but instead we just put an arrow that and write table or we can call it anything we want you know take we could call this one table detail and then we ask for a summary for table detail and auto completes it for us so if we do that instead it gives us a bit more information so this is just number of participants number missing the percentage missing mean standard deviation median and 25th percentile 75th percentile min max skewness and kurtosis for the categorical variables, again, because it recognizes them as being categorical, it gives us some similar information, um, numbers missing, percentage missing, and then gives us the percent and the cumulative percent as well. So we can get that little bit of extra detail for just really creating this object here and then asking for a summary of it. So that's really useful. Of course, sometimes, particularly if you've got a huge spreadsheet, you don't want descriptive statistics for your entire spreadsheet, and this is what this command is doing. So instead, what you can do is create a little subset. So to create the subset, let's just say I'm only interested in sensation seeking and anxiety. That's the only thing I want my descriptive statistics for. So I say my subset, and I can call, I'm gonna call them vars variables for table. Again, call them anything you like. And what are they going to be? Type C, brackets, and then in the quotation marks, the variables I want to have in my subset. So I run that. And then I can get a descriptive statistics table for my subset by saying create table one, my variables equals, and then what I called my subset. And the data is the descriptive stats data frame again. So if I run that now, 
it gives me my main and SD for the two variables that I am interested in. Again, in the same way, so I'm going to call table detail, let's call this one table detail 2. I can get the more advanced table that way. So it's really easy to be able to produce much clearer, better descriptive statistics tables than asking for everything individually using the this set of commands. And um, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to split the data by categorical variables. So often this would be an experimental condition what I can do is I can create table one. So use the create table one command, use the data as my descriptive stats data, and I can type strata equals sex. So in this case, I'm going to get my descriptive statistics separately for males and females for all my variables in my data set. Often this would be an experimental condition or a group in an experiment. So you can compare your groups. This will also automatically give us P values that I'll come on to in a second. So create table one, data is descriptive stats data, that's my data frame, the strata is sex. I can run. And there we go. So we've got our mean and SD of age for our males and for our females. And it also gives us a p value for the difference. Um, it does it for sex as well, but of course we'd be ignoring that because we split it by male and female. Drug count, there we go again, and there's a p-value for the drug count difference and so on. And it also splits the drinker class as well. So that's the number of male non-drinkers, number of female non-drinkers, and so on. So it does give us these p-values. You can argue the rights and wrongs about using p-values in tables like this, particularly if it was in a trial. All I will tell you is um, this is basically just does anovers for the comparisons. Um, if you've only got two conditions, the ANOVA is equivalent to the t-test. And for the categorical variables, it does Fisher's test as well. You may probably not want to actually do some formal hypothesis testing in this way. You should be you know, checking your assumptions, so homogeneity of variance and things like that. So I wouldn't particularly recommend it. It just does it automatically. But it is a neat way to get your tables. And if you do want p-values for the comparisons, it does it automatically for you. Now, of course, you may not want to have this done for all the variables so what we could do is using the previous example that we we had here we can just say okay we're just going to get it for the two variables we are interested in so vars for table which was just um, sensation seeking and anxiety so if you did want to do it just for that there we go Sensation seeking, male and female, and the p-value for the difference. So we could also have it reduced and do those comparisons in that way. So that's why table one's a really useful package because it's really easy to produce your descriptive statistics tables and um, containing the exact statistics that you want, including things like p-values for differences if you wanted them and so on.